Uh, welcome back. This is the South African Morning. Officials still investigating the cause of a fire uh, that gutted parts of Parliament, flaring up again yesterday because of the wind after firefighters had contained it on Sunday. Uh, authorities, and as we've been seeing from the visuals, there's extensive damage to the National Assembly and the Old Assembly Chamber. Well, let's find out what it could take to get it back to uh, its previous glory uh, as an iconic building uh, from award-winning architect Phil Mashabane. Phil, good morning to you. Thank you very much uh, for your your time and all the best for the year ahead. I mean, I know we haven't had any inspectors going and it's still too dangerous, but from what you've seen, how damaged do you think this building is? Is it, is it salvageable, I think is the key question. Well, good morning, Jonathan, and the viewers. You know, a lot could be still salvageable on, on the building itself, but however, as you've mentioned, it would depend on the inspections and the, and the reports that uh, are going to be made available as to the um, structural integrity of the building. But this, of course, um, to be restored to its uh, original or former glory, it may be possible we'll have to dig out craftsmen uh, based on the reports that we will be getting. You know, craftsmen people are not just builders, people who take care, who've got empathy, who'd look at the, uh, at, the, at the building itself of what it should be. However, it is not necessary on such buildings to restore them to, to their former glory. And it is based on the South African Heritage Resources Act. But of course, um, as I've mentioned, it would require a lot of empathy. It would require a lot of uh, creativity on the uh, consultants that are going to be appointed. Uh, there is room to make a beautiful building out of it and keep the facade that has been done before. Uh, but as to the functions of the buildings, yes, certain things can be achieved but only subject to the uh, Structural Integrity Report. I'm, I'm interested that you, you brought up the historical landmark, because that does change how this building is going to get treated going forward as well. I imagine, apart from the fire investigation, uh, establishing how much damage there is, there's a, a bigger process at play, isn't there, Phil, long before we start putting up new roof tiles uh, because of its yes. significance. Uh, there's going to be uh, all kinds of experts like yourself getting involved uh, to find out the best way uh, the most cost-effective way and the most realistic way of getting it back to uh, the way it used to be. You can't just go and put new windows in and give it a lick of paint, can you? Yeah, well, it's not only about those cosmetic things, about the roof and, and, the, um, and the windows, as you mentioned, Gareth. It's about the history of the, of the building itself. You know, those buildings were established as early as um, 18, uh, 1884, uh, the latest, and the late, latest was 1920, and certain additions were done in 1980. But there's been a trend to keep the history of the parliament. It doesn't matter what government we have, but the seat of parliament is a seat of parliament. It needs to be respected and be dealt in a specific way. And it is that social aspects that needs to be brought on board. It cannot be erased uh, by any other new interventions. A certain memory of the building would need to be kept if it Coming to the worst, it needs to be demolished partially, but a certain memory needs to be kept. But then, of course, uh, when we put new windows and new roof and et cetera, it would need to be consistent with reasonably consistent with the existing structures around the parliament. Mm. I, I take a look back at uh, some of the other big cities around the world that have had devastating fires uh, over the years. I'm not suggesting we're comparing this to what happens over in the United States, but older buildings uh, that have been gutted in the past around the world have been uh, restored uh, almost to their former glory, but they've also been updated, haven't they, Phil, to have uh, more fire safety conscious materials used as well. I mean, this is quite yes. an old building, I imagine, in the reconstruction. Uh, could we see a case of uh, newer, more fire retardant materials being used? Yes, it's not only the new fire retardant materials that can be used. You know, it's it is a necessity to do that, uh, given the modern technologies. But however, we need to apply the new fire and safety regulations as stipulated by various documents of, uh, of, of legislative processes in terms of buildings. Um, yes, some other countries who do have huge budgets, who are able to manage their budgets, are able to restore their buildings into their former glories. But that has not been the case in South Africa. You know, most buildings in South Africa, which has been gutted, most important buildings in terms of heritage aspect, they've been raised to the ground, 
by various ways of neglect or slow movement or slow approach and delayed restoration, which gives rise to other problems in the process. But hoping that with the parliament building, the, uh, the powers that be would make not a rush decisions, but reasonable decisions to put aside good budgets to get the building back into its former glory, if possible. Uh, Phil, let me leave this as a, a last question to you, just a brief answer if, uh, if it's at all possible, uh, running out of time a little bit. If you had to look into your crystal ball, a crystal ball as Phil uh, Mashabane, what's the timeline here, do you think? Well, we're looking at just about 18 months to restore the building itself. It's a very complex building. It's a complex process. You know, there's an investigation that is going to take no less than four to five months. Well, worst of all, six months, the investigation and reports coming in the appointment of consultants, their consultants coming in with their proposals and et cetera. And the construction period then is another period of time which may take, uh, let's say about 12 months at max uh, to do the building. So it's not uh, a quick fix. That building won't be a quick fix, mm -hmm. given the, the, the pace at which we know how our country operates certain things. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Uh, Award-winning architect Phil Mashabane, I really appreciate uh, your time in speaking to us uh, this morning, giving us a sense of how long it could take and the extent of the damage, knowing, of course, and bearing in mind, we haven't had the investigations to Melo uh, mm -hmm. as to what's actually happened so far, but it looks like it's going to be a long, mm -hmm. uh, long process until we see Parliament back to uh, any semblance right. of its former glory. Important point he made this not just about the cosmetic no, it's not. reconstructions no. it's also about the history uh, that dates back to 1884 when it was first constructed so of course we'll see what happens and keep updated right here on ENCA on the